The Russo-Japanese War was a year-long conflict that involved the Russian Empire, led by Tsar Nicholas II, and the Empire of Japan, led by Emperor Meiji. Despite only lasting a year, the war had a lasting impact for many years after. The war was the first time a European nation had ever lost to a Far Eastern power, and it was the first major war of the 20th century. So how did the Russians lose the war? The war started when Russia, after acquiring Manchuria from the Qing Empire during the Boxer Rebellion, started to influence the Korean Peninsula. Japan had claimed that Korea was already in their sphere of influence. Obviously, this didn't bode well with the Japanese, and in 1904, negotiations broke down, and in February, Japan launched a surprise attack on Port Arthur. The Tsar would receive a declaration of war three hours later, and eight days later, Russia would declare war on Japan. The main factor of Russia's loss was overconfidence. Russia was certain that Japan would not score a single victory against them. At first, this appeared to be true, because despite being a sneak attack, the Battle of Port Arthur was a stalemate, as only a few Russian ships were damaged, and the battle became a stalemate, ending in an inconclusive battle. But for the Japanese, this battle was a smokescreen to set up a blockade around Port Arthur and to invade Korea, to gain a foothold in mainland Asia. The Japanese were successful in both goals as Japan had succeeded in making a blockade that would not be broken during the entire war, and they would control the entire Korean peninsula by April. Russia would fail to score a single major victory against the Japanese. The first land battle of the war would be the Battle of Yalu River, and would be an overwhelming victory for the Japanese. This demonstrated to the Russians that the Japanese were not to be underestimated. Yet the Russians would be certain that they could win the war to until towards the end. The Tsar had confidence that the 2nd Pacific Squadron would be able to score a victory against the Japanese so that Russia could at least have some favorability during the peace treaty. Instead, this had the opposite effect and gave the Japanese time to invade Sakhalin before the end of the war. Another large factor was pure incompetence. Russian leadership was poor, with two main generals commanding the forces in Manchuria. Alexei Kuropatkin was a timid and defensive general who lost two major battles of the war, the Battle of Liaoyang and the Battle of Mukden, with Anatoly Stiesel having control of the army during the siege of Port Arthur. Stiesel was stubborn and combative, shown by his refusal to leave Port Arthur after being ordered multiple times to relocate, and he would surrender the port without consulting anyone. Japan had more success with their commanders. Nogi Marisuki would lead the attack and siege of Port Arthur. Oyama Iowa would lead multiple victories against the Russians. The Russian army was in poor condition. Russia had cut their military budget in half in 1902. Russia was still teaching volley tactics during the beginning of the war. The Russian army in Manchuria was more of a show of force than an actual force to be reckoned with. Many soldiers were poorly trained and ill-equipped. Russia also had a hard time transporting men and supplies due to how far away the war was from central Russia. Japan had rapidly mobilized their army thanks to help of advisors from France and Germany. Japan had also built up a modern navy thanks to the British. The most notorious example of how bad the state of the Russian military is the Baltic Fleet redeployments, aka the Voyage of the Damned. You see, the Tsar had the brilliant idea to break the blockade of Port Arthur by sending the Baltic Fleet 18,000 miles around the world to defeat the Japanese Navy. Of course, Russia being Russia, they pretty much ignored all the things that could go wrong, such as the fact that none of the ships were designed to travel these distances, were not suited for tropical weather, and some ships were not even designed for battle as some were literally supply ships or yachts with several guns strapped on. The crew in charge of these ships were even worse. Most were conscripts from central Russia. Most had never seen the ocean up until this point. Most had little to no training, and this would reflect throughout the journey. This crew would be known as the 2nd Pacific Squadron, and the unfortunate man in charge was Zinovi Rozovinsky. The squadron would set sail on October 16, 1904. Only five days later, the Dogger Bank incident would happen. On the night of October 21st, Russian commanders mistook British fishing vessels as Japanese torpedo boats. Russian ships opened fire and sunk one ship with damaging five more ships. Two British fishermen died and six more were injured. During the chaos, the Russians also confused each other for Japanese ships and opened fire upon each other. 
two Russian ships were hit, with two Russian crewmen dying. This means that the squadron had a KD of 1 against unarmed civilian fishing ships. This incident also led to the British almost declaring war on Russia, and as a result, the British denied the squadron access to the Suez Canal. Rosovinsky had to sack the officers responsible for the incident, and this included Captain Clado. Captain Clado was now in charge of sending reinforcements to Rosovinsky, and Clado took this opportunity to get revenge on Rosovinsky. Clado would send Russia's worst ships available, and the squadron would be called the 3rd Pacific Squadron, or the Sink by the Sun Squadron. Rosovinsky would avoid communication with Russia to avoid the squadron, but they would unfortunately meet up near Indochina. For some time, the squadron had lost contact with the Kamchatka, who soon returned with good news. They successfully repelled three Japanese torpedo boats. The bad news, the sh ships were a German, Swedish, and French ships. But luckily, the Kamchatka only shot 300 rounds and hit nothing, so there was no problem. After several other incidents, the squadron would eventually reach Madagascar, in which Admiral Rozovinsky would be sick and stay in his cabin for two weeks. Next in command was his chief of staff, who suffered a brain hemorrhage and was partially paralyzed. The crew had no one in command, and the crew would go on shore to saloons, gambling houses, and even brothels, only to get every STD known to man. Malaria, dysentery, and typhoid broke out among the crew and killed a few. Rosovinsky would also order gunnery practice in which every ship missed the target except the flagship who hit the ship towing the target. They would eventually reach the Strait of Tsushima, where they would meet their fate. The Russian fleet had 4,000 dead, 7,000 captured, with 8 battleships, 9 cruisers, and several other ships being sunk. Rosovinsky wasn't killed in the battle, but was knocked out early. Rosovinsky was lucky, as Russia had terrible luck with the naval commanders during this war. Admiral Stefan Makarov oversaw the fleet docked in Port Arthur in March of 1904, only to die in April when his ship hit a mine and sunk. Next in command was Wilhelm Vetgeft, who was ordered to break out of Port Arthur and regroup at Vladivostok. He died in the Battle of the Yellow Sea. Russia lost the war badly due to confidence, logistical problems, and incompetence. Russia would lose all of Manchuria and southern Saigon. It would also recognize that Korea was in Japan's sphere of influence. So what was the significance of this war? The war was the first to include modern weapons including machine guns, the modern rifle, and rapid firing artillery. Tactics used in this war such as trench warfare would be used in future wars such as World War I. For Russia, the effects were devastating. Powers such as Germany and Austria-Hungary saw Russia as notably weak and used this against the Russians during World War I. During the war, after the surrender of Port Arthur, a revolution broke out known as the October Manifesto. This would weaken the Tsar's power and force Russia to have a constitutional monarchy. The unrest would last until 1917 when a communist revolution broke out, ending the Russian Empire. For Japan, it was a great victory. They had proven that they were a world power and were now on the global stage. They gained confidence and the people became more nationalist which eventually led to the invasion of China in 1937 the Pacific Theater in World War II. The nation had also been financially strained by the war. Japan and Russia would collectively lose around 100,000 to 200,000 men, with around 20,000 Chinese civilians dead, mostly due to Russian looting and burning villages, raping women, and mass shootings, due to the fear of yellow peril, a term used to describe that all Asians were the enemy, as an Asian, you must help other Asians. The Japanese were also prone to looting, but in less brutal fashion. These war crimes and several failed attempts to rescue drowning sailors at sea led to the Second Geneva Convention. The Red Cross would also play an important role in the war to help wounded soldiers on both sides.